can imagine, material losses during World War II were massive. According to one source, Germany produced a staggering 119,907 aircraft of all types, with most being destroyed or damaged during the war. The US lost 52,951 of their 95,000 aircraft in operations over Europe and the Pacific. The Soviet Union lost 46,100 of their aircraft in combat, and the incredible statistics go on and on. In the middle of all this carnage in the air were the fighter squadrons of the Allied and Axis powers. In this video, we take a look at a dozen remarkable fighter units of World War II. Number 303 Polish Squadron of the RAF holds a place of distinction in the annals of World War II aviation history. Comprised of Polish pilots who had escaped Nazi-occupied Poland, the squadron became one of the most celebrated and effective units during the Battle of Britain in 1940. On August 30, 1940, a training flight led by squadron leader Ronald Kellett came across some Luftwaffe bombers with one of the young pilots shooting down a Bf 110 heavy fighter. The next day, they were operational. Initially equipped with Hawker Hurricanes for its first year, the squadron's pilots displayed remarkable skill, determination, and combat prowess. Despite facing significant challenges due to language barriers and cultural differences, the Polish pilots quickly integrated into the Royal Air Force and demonstrated their capabilities with exceptional success. Number 303 Squadron quickly gained a reputation for its aggressive and effective tactics achieving a remarkable tally of aerial victories during the intense aerial combat of the Battle of Britain, earning the admiration of their fellow RAF squadrons. The highest scoring pilot of the squadron and the fourth highest scoring ace in the Battle of Britain, with 17 claims, was Czech ace Josef Frantisek. He died in an air crash on October 8, 1940. Other high scoring pilots in the squadron were Witold Urbanowicz, with 14 victories, Jan Zumbach, Zdzislav Henneberg and Eugenius Zaposnikov, all with eight victories each. Squadron leader Jan Zumbach rose to prominence in the squadron as a skilled and aggressive pilot. Known for his daring and determined style of flying, Zumbach found himself engaged in numerous dogfights against the Luftwaffe over the skies of southern England. As with all of the Polish pilots, language barriers and cultural differences didn't dampen the combat prowess of Zumbach and his fellow pilots, contributing to the squadron's remarkable success in downing enemy aircraft. Throughout the conflict, Zumbach continued to distinguish himself, achieving eight aerial victories during the Battle of Britain and final victory tally by the end of the war was 12 confirmed kills and two shared, five probables and one damaged. By late January 1941, the squadron converted to Spitfire Mark I's and went on to become the most effective Polish RAF squadron during World War II. The squadron had flown 9,900 combat sorties and achieved 204 kills the highest scoring Polish squadron in the RAF. US Marine Fighting Squadron VMF-121 was activated on 24th of June 1941. Known as the Green Knights, they began combat operations flying F-4F Wildcats and later F-4U Corsairs. From October 1942, they became members of the Cactus Air Force, the name given to the ensemble of Allied Air Forces operating from the island of Guadalcanal from August until December 1942, during the most heavily contested phases of the Guadalcanal campaign. VMF-121 pilots and aircraft had been sent to Guadalcanal as part of Operation Watchtower to relieve VMF-223, who had been fighting for control of the air over the island since mid-August. Medal of Honor recipient, Major Joseph J. Foss, led a flight of eight Wildcats, known as Foss's Flying Circus, which claimed 72 Japanese aircraft, including 26 credited to Foss himself in three months of sustained combat. The squadron also fought from the forward air bases of Espirito Santo, Turtle Bay, Bougainville and Emerau. On the 15th of September, 1944, the Green Knights landed on Peleliu and fought there until the 25th of July, 1945. They returned to the United States to be deactivated on 9th of September that year. During the Pacific War, VMF-121 produced 14 fighter aces, more than any other Marine squadron, and had downed 208 Japanese aircraft in aerial combat. The 
431st was established by the 5th Air Force in Australia in May 1943 at Amberley Air Base in Queensland, Australia. They were specifically trained to provide long-range escort for bombers with their long-range Lockheed P-38J Lightnings during daylight raids on Japanese airfields and strongholds in the Netherlands East Indies and the Bismarck Archipelago. On the 14th of August 1943, the squadron moved from Amberley to Port Moresby in New Guinea. Providing escorts for North American B-25 Mitchell bombers that were engaged in strafing attacks on airdromes at Wewak, the squadron also scored highly against the enemy fighters that attacked the bomber formations. Between the 15th and 17th of October 1943, the squadron intercepted and destroyed many Japanese aircraft which were sent against American shipping in Oro Bay. The squadron also provided air cover for landings in New Guinea, New Britain and the Scutan Islands. After moving to Biak in July 1944, the squadron flew escort missions and fighter sweeps to the southern Philippines, Celebes, Halmahera and Borneo. Within the 431st, two pilots emerged as leading aces, the squadron commander, Thomas B. Maguire, claiming 38 victories before being killed in January 1945, and Charles F. MacDonald with 27 aerial victories. Between October to December 1944, based at Moritai, the squadron attacked enemy airfields and installations, escorting bombers and engaging in aerial combat during the first stages of the Allied campaign to recover the Philippines. The squadron flew missions to support ground forces on Luzon during the first part of 1945, escort missions to southeast China and attacked railways on Formosa. By the end of the war, the squadron had claimed 212 victories. Spitfire Mark 1A X4009 is probably the most significant remaining Spitfire in the world. It is the Battle of Britain aircraft with the highest kill number left. It'll be one of only four Mark 1A Spitfires flying, which makes it the rarest and most prestigious aircraft, but also being the aircraft of Patterson Clarence Hughes, who's Australia's top scoring ace, and he was the only person to ever fly the aircraft operationally. We've been working with REC now for 18 months on this project. We supplied some uh, parts of uh, aircraft skin that we couldn't use again in the restoration of the aircraft. So that, you know, be incorporated into their watches. So you're, you're wearing a watch that has part of that aircraft that fought in the Battle of Britain with Pat Hughes at the, at the controls. I mean, this, this watch is fantastic. It, it just feels like a piece of Spitfire. And to think that uh, part of this watch was flying around in the Battle of Britain with Pat at the controls, it just, you know, to, you become a part of it. You feel like you're a part of history. I'm absolutely delighted with the look of the watch. It's a superb uh, timepiece. I'm a bit of a watch collector myself, and this is a superb watch. It looks fantastic. I think it's a fantastic achievement to be able to incorporate the part of the aircraft in it. So it lives on and it keeps the spirit of Patterson Hughes alive. So I think it serves a fantastic purpose. I just hope that everyone really gets to enjoy this watch for what it is and be part of the future of X4009. And I hope from the bottom of my heart you all enjoy what we're about to launch. On the 9th of January 1943, the 61st Fighter Squadron, part of 56 Group, was deployed to RAF King's Cliff in England to be operationally ready two months later, flying their first combat missions on the 13th of April. These missions were fighter bomber sweeps along the lines of the generally ineffective Circus and Rhubarb missions and escorting the earlier 8th Air Force raids as far as Belgium. Flying the P-47C Thunderbolt as a bomber escort unit initially for B-17 Flying Fortresses and later for B-24 Liberators, attacking enemy targets in occupied Europe. On June 9, 1943, Francis Gabreski took command of the squadron and would go on to score 28 enemy aircraft destroyed and 6.5 MiG-15 kills during the Korean War. On July 20, 1944, Gabreski had reached his 300 hours combat limit and was scheduled to return home. However, on the same morning of his scheduled return, he requested to go on one more mission, a bomber escort. On the way back from the mission, 
He spotted parked Heinkel HE-111s at Niedermandig and decided to strafe them. On his second run, flying just above the ground, he dipped his nose to adjust his fire and his prop clipped the runway. He crashed and managed to escape into the woods for five days, but was eventually caught and sent to Stalag Luft 1. The 61st would produce 19 aces, the highest of any squadron in Europe, destroying 248 aircraft in the air and 67 and a half aircraft on the ground. In 1944, it was recognized as the first fighter squadron in the European theater to score over 100 victories. The 487th Squadron was a US Mustang squadron and part of the US 352nd Fighter Group of the US 8th Air Force. Initially flying P-47s from their combat station at RAF Bodney, they flew its first combat mission on 9th of September 1943. These were escort missions for eight Bomber Command heavy bombers participating in the bombing campaign against Germany. From the 20th to 25th of February 1944, the squadron flew cover for bombers involved in the Big Week campaign against the German aircraft manufacturing industry. From these escort missions, squadron members George E. Preddy claimed 26.83 enemy aircraft destroyed, John C. Meyer with 24, and William T. Wisner with 15.5. In April 1944, the squadron began to replace its Thunderbolts with the longer range North American P-51D Mustangs. On the 8th of May, the squadron was escorting bombers on a raid on Braunschweig and countered a larger force of German interceptors. Fighting until they had run out of ammunition and low on fuel, the squadron was awarded the Distinguished Unit Citation for their actions. The squadron was also involved in the Battle of the Bulge, among other campaigns over Europe, earning a French Croix de Guerre with Palm and a second Distinguished Unit Citation. The 487th flew its last mission on May 3, 1945, with Preddy and Meyer classed as the two top Mustang aces, with 26.83, and 25.5 kills respectively. The squadron finished the war with 235 victories under its belt. At the outbreak of the Second World War, number 85 Squadron RAF with their Hurricanes became part of the air component of the British Expeditionary Force 60th Fighter Wing. Tasked primarily with air defense patrols, it wasn't until the Blitzkrieg commenced in May 1940 that 85 Squadron found themselves head-to-head -head with the Luftwaffe. In an 11-day period, the squadron had confirmed a total of 90 enemy aircraft victories and many more claims that could not be verified. After retreating from the battles over France, the squadron re-equipped and resumed operations for the Battle of Britain over southern England. In September, the squadron moved to Yorkshire, where it soon began night fighter patrols, a role it would continue in for the remainder of the war. In January 1941, the squadron received defiance, but these were soon replaced by havocs, although the hurricanes continued to be flown until July. Mosquitoes arrived for the squadron in August 1942, and in March 1943, the squadron began flying intruder missions over France. In early 1944, 85 played a key role in the defeat of the final German bomber campaign, Operation Steinbock, helping to decimate the remaining Luftwaffe bomber fleet. After being transferred to number 100 group on the 1st of May, 1944, the squadron flew bomber support missions, intruding over German night fighter airfields and intercepting enemy fighters by accompanying the main bomber force. By war's end, the squadron had racked up 278 victories and produced numerous aces, including Brant's Burbridge with 21 victories. The US Navy's VF-15 fighter squadron was operating for two years, between September 1943 and October 1945. Most of its action took place within a six-month period from May 1944, when operating from USS Essex. Flying Grumman F6F Hellcats, the squadron was part of Carrier Air Group 15, that started operations with strikes on Marcus and Wake Islands in May 1944. They then went on to the Marianas from June to August, where the group conducted 3,078 sorties, shooting down 104 aircraft and destroying another 136 on the ground or in the water, as well as sinking or damaging 60 ships. 
then, during the Battle of the Philippine Sea on the 20th of June 1944, the squadron participated in what would become known as the Marianas Turkey Shoot, during which they claimed 68 and a half aerial victories, the most in one day of any Navy squadron. October 1944 saw the Great Sea Battle at Leyte Gulf, the largest naval battle of World War II, and VF-15's Hellcats decimated the remnants of the Japanese Air Force, with David McCampbell destroying nine Japanese fighters, the highest total in a day by any US fighter pilot, and his wingman Roy Rushing, downing six. The air battle continued in the Philippines for several more weeks, before moving to Iwo Jima, Okinawa, and finally off the coast of Japan in the last months of the war. At war's end, the squadron had claimed 315 victories and producing no less than 28 aces. Number 92 Squadron RAF was equipped with Supermarine Spitfires in March 1940 and continued to use Spitfires throughout most of the war. During the evacuation of Dunkirk, the squadron claimed 11 victories on the last day alone. The squadron was full of talented pilots, such as Robert Stamford Tuck, who was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross and would go on to 257 Squadron with a career culminating with 29 enemy aircraft destroyed and two shared. Brian Kingcombe, who took command of the squadron early in 1941, was also awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross and scored eight enemy aircraft destroyed and three shared. And Tony Bartley, another DFC recipient, had destroyed 12 enemy aircraft and one shared. After 92 Squadron, he flew with number 74 and then commanded 65 and then 111 squadrons. Another interesting character was Geoffrey Wellham, who despite his young age, he was 18, quickly proved himself as an exceptional pilot in 92 Squadron. His memoir, First Light, provides a gripping first-hand account of the intense aerial combat experienced by RAF pilots during the Battle of Britain. His first commanding officer was Roger Bushell, who was shot down and captured not long after Wellham's arrival in the squadron. Bushell would later be immortalized in the film The Great Escape and was executed by the Gestapo after being recaptured. Wellham's bravery and skill in the air earned him the Distinguished Flying Cross for his outstanding leadership and gallantry. He survived many of his colleagues from 92 Squadron, recalling his survival as a combination of skill and luck. He remarked that, you make yourself a difficult target, never stay still, never fly straight and level, chuck it around. Quite often you'd find yourself surrounded by airplanes and then the sky would be empty. Where's everybody gone? It was then that you were in danger. It was the German you didn't see who shot you down. Throughout the war, Number 92 Squadron continued to distinguish itself in various theatres of operation, including North Africa, Sicily, and the Italian campaign. The squadron's contributions to the Allied war effort, from the early days of the Battle of Britain to the closing stages of the conflict, exemplified the bravery, skill, and determination of the RAF's fighter pilots. The squadron claimed 317 and a half victories during the entire war. Number 249 Squadron RAF, reformed as a fighter squadron with Hurricanes on 16th of May 1940, operating from RAF Church Fenton. It was an extremely effective Hurricane Squadron during the Battle of Britain, with pilot James Nicholson winning Fighter Command's only Victoria Cross when despite his aircraft being in flames, he pressed home his attack to destroy a BF-110. The squadron, based at Boscombe Down, faced the full force of the German assault on Fighter Command during the third phase of the battle from August 24 to September 6. During the battle on September 1st, the squadron moved to North Weald with Number 11 Group, taking part in the fourth phase of the battle, the daylight assault on London, and the last phase, the fighter bomber raids. In May 1941, the squadron had been shipped to Malta via aircraft carrier Ark Royal to form part of fighter defense for the sieged island, still with hurricanes. Supermarine Spitfire 5B and 5Cs arrived for the squadron by February 1942, and they were flying fighter-bomber missions over Sicily by November, and then on to Brindisi in southern Italy by October 1943. From Italy, the squadron flew sweeps over Albania and Yugoslavia. In September 1944, 
the squadron converted from Spitfire 9s to North American Mustang 3s. In April 1945, they moved to northern Yugoslavia for one month to help push the Germans out of the country. They then spent a short time in northern Italy before disbanding on 16th of August 1945. The squadron ended the war with over 320 victories and 21 aces altogether, led by George Buerling with 27.33, Tom Neal with 12.58 and Ray Hesselin with 12. During World War II, there were many outstanding fighter wings of the Luftwaffe known as Jagdgeschwader, literally fighter squadron, which were fighter wings, broken into three or four Gruppen, or groups, which were independent fighting units, each with their own commander. Within these Gruppen were three or four Staffel consisting up to 12 aircraft, although this number was rarely reached, especially near the end of the war. So, when we are talking about a Jagdgeschwader, we are talking about a wing of many squadrons across multiple theatres, and thus the very high number of victories compared to a single Allied squadron. Jagdgeschwader 51 was probably the most decorated Luftwaffe wing during World War II. First commanded by Major Werner Mulders, the famed wing commander who was the first to shoot down 100 enemy aircraft. JG-51 flew in all major theatres during the war with BF-109s and FW-190s, with an estimated 8,000 air victories across the wing's four groups. Early in the war, and based in the West, they were fighting in the French Campaign and the Battle of Britain, in which they suffered significant losses. In mid-1940, JG-51 moved to saint anglever to the newly captured airstrip in Nord-Pas-de-Calais, and then to the Belgian airfield at Mardiac late in the year. By May 1941, the wing had claimed 345 victories, becoming an elite unit with the top 10 aces at the time. During the Barbarossa Offensive, JG-51 had claimed 500 Soviet aircraft, with Werner Mulders reaching his 100th claim in July and Oberfeldwebel Heinz Baer reaching 60 claims. Mulders would leave the fighter wing in September and was later that year killed as a passenger in a crash at Breslau. JG-51 would be named in his honor. Group 3 of JG-51 would fly fighter-bomber operations against the Russians through January 1942 and accounted for many aerial victories. Notable from Group 4 was Heinz Baer, who by mid-February 1942 had achieved 90 claims before being reassigned to JG-77. By November 1942, JG-51 had claimed an estimated 4,000 victories. JG-51 was also active in the Mediterranean operations, and although Group 2 claimed some 121 aerial victories, they were outgunned by Allied fighters, suffering significant losses. By April 1943, their remaining aircraft were absorbed into JG-77, which left North Africa on the 19th of April. JG-51 continued to operate over Sicily, Yugoslavia and the Balkans. During the offensive around the Kursk salient in July 1943, JG-51 scored heavily and by the end of the month had claimed its 6,000th victory and by May its 8,000th. Jagdgeschwader 54, known as the Green Hearts, became the second highest scoring Luftwaffe unit during the war. The wing flew primarily Messerschmitt Bf 109 and Fokker Wolf FW 190 fighters and used camouflage patterns more similar to that of bombers than fighters at the time. JG 54 saw its first combat operations in September of 1939, taking part in the invasion of Poland with groups two and three, while group one was held in reserve at Herzogenaurach. JG-54's main task during this time was Stuka escort and air superiority with their BF-109Ds. Following the Poland campaign, JG-54 was relocated to the west and south of Germany as air defense in preparation for the German invasions of France and the Low Countries. During the Battle of France from May 10, 1940, JG-54 escorted bombers and conducted fighter sweeps over France to maintain air superiority. To re-equip the unit and rest the pilots, JG-54 relocated to Holland just before the Battle of Britain. A raid on the Soesterberg airfield at the time saw heavy losses of ground crew and equipment for No. 3 Group. 
the Battle of Britain proved to be one of the most challenging campaigns for the wing. The three groups from JG-54 were located near Calais by the 6th of August 1940 and flew in the most hostile environment they had yet encountered, with the loss of 43 pilots, which was 40% of the pilots they'd started the battle with. They did, however, claim 238 aerial victories, and Hauptmann Dietrich Rabach, after 20 victories, was awarded the Knight's Cross. It would be on the Eastern Front that JG-54 would see its greatest victories, claiming 45 victories on the first day of the offensive. From that first day on the 22nd of June through to the 5th of December 1941, the unit had destroyed 1,078 Soviet aircraft, with only 46 losses in aerial combat and one fighter destroyed on the ground. Oberfeldwebel Rudolf Klemm, on the 4th of April 1942, would claim the 2,000th victory for the unit, only to be doubled by 23rd of February the following year. It was at the beginning of 1943 that the unit received Fokker Wolf 190s and would go on to achieve 7,000 victories by the 23rd of March 1944, with the 8,000 mark passed on the 15th of August. Groups 1, 2 and 4 ended the war fighting around the Baltic region, supporting the troops of Army Group North through Latvia and Estonia and into the Courland pocket of East Prussia. Group 3 fought against the RAF and USAAF in the West from the beginning of 1943 as a standalone BF-109 unit but were eventually attached to JG-26. By autumn of 1944, Group 3 would have FW-190D9s, but the group was soon disbanded due to heavy losses. For a short time, Group 3 would be reformed to operate out of Muncherberg against Russian ground targets. But a few weeks before the end of the war, the depleted unit was absorbed into JG-26. It is estimated that JG-54 had 9,600 aerial victories at a cost of 1,071 BF-109s and 746 FW-190s, 491 pilots killed, 242 missing and 322 wounded, with 570 ground personnel killed. JG-52 is arguably the most famous fighter wing of the Luftwaffe during World War II. The wing was divided into three groups. Initially formed in 1939 under the command of Hubertus Mehrhardt von Bernig, it was assigned to Luftwaffe units fighting over France and then Britain during the Battle of Britain. The wing was reassigned to the Eastern Front suffering numerous casualties during the campaign for air superiority. The early performance of the wing over France and then Britain was unremarkable with 177 claims against 53 pilots killed or prisoned. However, on the Eastern Front, at the outset of Operation Barbarossa, JG-52 enjoyed great success, shooting down many Soviet pilots flying outdated aircraft. Further equipped with ever-improving models of the famed BF-109, JG-52 was assigned to many roles, most notably supporting the ground assault in the Battle of Stalingrad and Second Battle of Kharkov. By September 7, 1941, the wing had accumulated 500 victories by May 1942, 1,500, and by June 3rd, it had reached 2,000 aerial victories. Re-equipping with the BF-109G in mid-June 1942, Group 1 of JG-52 was fighting in the Caucasus, shuttling between the Kirsch Peninsula to the Moscow Front and claiming its 700th victory by September 1942. JG-52 had reached 4,000 victories by December 10th, 1942 as Groups 3 supported the push toward the Caucasian oil fields and Group 2 supported the attempted breakthrough by the 4th Panzer Army in late 1942. By 20th of April 1943, the Jagdgeschwade had its 5,000th victory by Gunter Rall, with battles centred around the Strait of Kerch and the Crimea. A further 1,000 victories would be taken over the Ukraine during the Kursk Offensive, with Hauptmann Johannes Visa of Group 2 claiming 12 Soviet aircraft in a single day. By November 1943, the loss of Kiev threatened the stability of the entire southern sector front, and the whole of JG-52 was brought together to bolster defences. By December 1943, JG-52 had reached 8,000 victories. The most successful Gruppe No. 3 
claimed 3,500 victories by the 21st of March, 1944. On the 10th of May, 1944, the 9,000th claim was made, with the 10,000 mark passed on the 2nd of September, 1944, by Adolf Borchers. After the German defeat, most of JG-52 Group 1 and 2 surrendered to the Americans, however, were controversially handed over to the Soviet Army. This resulted in several show trials for JG-52 officers and years of prolonged imprisonment. By the end of the war, JG-52 had claimed over 10,000 victories, and from within its ranks emerged the top three scoring aces in the history of air combat. Gerhard Barkhorn, claiming 300 or 301, Gunther Rall, claiming 274 or 275, and the highest scorer ever, Eric Hartmann claiming 352 victories. <laughs>